Welcome to today's episode of the Mindset Mentor Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Dial. And if you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another podcast episode. And today, we're going to talk about how to find your purpose. Oof. I know. I always get this question asked to me. It's probably one of the most important questions, and I'm going to do my best to answer this question for you. But I get this question asked to me at least 20 times a day on Instagram is, how do I find my purpose? I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing in this life. And the first thing that I'll tell you is this, don't be so attached to it because your purpose will find you when it's supposed to. One of the things that people I tend to find is that they are so rushed to find it that they don't end up finding it because or they haven't found it yet because it's literally like, it's it's like the example of... Um, you know, the little girl who gets a, a new, brand new rabbit. And she asks her parents, hey, can I hold the rabbit? Can I take it home and hold it? And so they're like, yeah, sure. So they give her the rabbit, she's holding it. And then when we get to it, you get to the house, they realize that the rabbit is dead. And the reason why is because the little girl squeezed it so much because she loved it so much and she just wanted to hold it so tight that she ended up accidentally killing the rabbit. And it's like, I feel like that's how sometimes people are with their purpose. They're like, I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. I got to figure it out. In the white knuckling the feeling of trying to figure out their purpose is actually a thing that's holding them back from creating the space to find their purpose. And so we're going to go deep into your purpose today. And I like to call it the $500 million question. So I'm going to ask you the $500 million question. If you woke up this morning and you looked in your bank account, you know, someone sends you a text message and they say, hey, look inside of your bank account. I just gave you a gift. And you look inside of your bank account and that bank account has $500 million in it. What do you do with the rest of your life? Think about that for a second. If you had $500 million in your bank account, you don't ever have to worry about money again. Your children don't ever have to worry about money again. If you plan it correctly, your children's children don't need to worry about money again. The safety and security in your life of will I have food? Will I have water? Will I have shelter? Will I have clothing? Is basically good. You're good to go for the rest of your life. That's the animalistic part of your brain. Now that we can turn the animalistic part of your brain off, we get to go, all right, well then what do I do with the rest of my life? Because a lot of times we're so focused on making money simply out of a feeling of scarcity and a feeling of I want to be able to provide for my family. I want to be able to provide for myself. I want to make sure that I can live. Well, if that's taken care of, now we can just step into the human side of our brain, which is what can I create? What can I do? What value can I leave the world? And so if you were gifted $500 million and you never have to worry about money again, and what would you do? Immediately, what do we do? Okay. Oh my God, I've got $500 million. I can go do whatever it is that I want to do. I can buy the cars that I want. I can buy the clothes that I want. I can take the trips that I want. I can buy a house here and I can buy a house in the water. I can buy a house in the mountains and, you know, I can buy my kids whatever I want. And that will go for a certain amount of time. But then eventually you realize that you don't feel any different when you have those things. Like I'm not more excited now. or I don't feel better now that I have a jet ski, right? It's just another thing that I have. And eventually you get to the point where you're like, well, what is my life for? What am, I, what am I here to do? What is it that I want to do? After all of that, after buying all of those things and having all the fun and doing all the trips and realizing that none of those things actually fulfilled you ever, what would you be putting your time and energy into? So think about that question. For you, do you know what it would be? If you don't, well then, you know, we need to figure out what that is. If you do, well then that's probably what you should be doing. And so I always say to people, because people are always so stressed out about finding their passion and finding their purpose, is that it's okay if right now in this moment, listening to my voice, you don't know what your purpose is. But it's not okay to not be in constant pursuit to find out what that purpose is. And so it's like, okay, well, now that I know that, now that I know that, you know, I'm taken care of, I'm going to wake up every single morning and I'm going to ask myself, and you can ask yourself this, even without having $500 million in your bank account, I'm going to ask myself, what is my purpose? God, universe, whatever it is that's out there, Tell me what my purpose is today. I'm going to wake up every single day and I'm going to set my reticular activating system to find what my purpose is. And I might get a little bit of a clue here and I might get a little bit of a clue there. And I start taking these clues and I put them together like puzzle pieces. And maybe in six months, I figure out what it is. Maybe it's a year. Maybe it's three years down the road. But eventually, I figure out what my purpose is. There's a pretty good chance that most of you listening to me right now 
have a pretty good idea of what your purpose is. The problem is that you're just thinking that it's ridiculous or it's not possible. And so you need to get past that and actually feel into it and say, hey, is this my purpose? Is this what I want to be doing? That's really the most important thing. So what would you be putting all of your time and energy into if you had $500 million? Would you spend more time with your children in making sure that you know, maybe you take your children out of school and you're like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to have a teacher come and I'm going to provide the best education that I can for my children. I'm going to make sure that my children develop the skill set of an entrepreneur instead of a skill set of working for somebody else. I'm going to make sure that I take my children's passions and I make them the best that I possibly can. Maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to be the coach for my son's baseball team. Maybe that's what your passion is, is you just want to give back in that way. And so a lot of times what holds people back is they think that their passion needs to be their paycheck. You don't need your passion to be your paycheck. You can be, if you can find a way for it to be, it can. But maybe what you do is you just find a way to make a paycheck. And then when you're not working, that's when you, you go after, after your pa- passion. You go after this pursuit that you want. And the beautiful thing about this is you're a human. Humans instinctively want to create. That's really what's what I think humans' purpose is to do, is to experience what it is to have this human experience and to create. We are all creators. We're all wanting to create things. Whenever we go and we create a painting, we feel good about it. Whenever we go and, and get better at a skill, we feel better about it. Whenever we decide that we want to learn how to play guitar and we learn the first you know C chord, we feel good about it. And so we want to create whatever we want to go create this business and maybe make this post that looks different or maybe create a video that feels a little bit the the creative side of you wants to come out. And a lot of times people don't know what their purpose is simply because that creative side has been so dormant inside of you for so long. And it was so strong when you were a kid. Do you remember being a kid and you were playing with your toys and you could make, you know, uh, you could literally find a leaf and it would be a dragon. You could, you could create anything that you wanted to. That still lives inside of you. It's just at some point in time, you decided to turn it off. And you probably didn't even know that you decided, but you did. You are the creator. What is it that you want to create? Now that we have an abundance of money, what do we want to create? Do we want to create something that's going to impact the world? Do we want to start writing? Do we want to start creating you know, inspirational poems? Do we want to start creating music? Do you want to you know, go out and, and start a foundation? You know, even if you don't have the money to start a foundation, that's showing you where your heart is at. So why don't you go and work with a foundation in your free time? You know, for me, when I really started to think about this, I realized what I would be doing if I had $500 million in my bank account, what I would be doing is literally what I'm doing right now. The thing that makes me the most intrigued out of anything in the world is how humans work. I don't know why it is. It's just the thing that clicks in my brain and makes me super excited to learn about the brain, to learn about neurobiology, psychology, early childhood development, and then look at a human and go, why are you the way that you are? Like, tell me your life story. Tell me about your parents. Tell me about the way that you were raised. Tell me about the traumas that you have in your life. And as I start picking, putting those pieces together, I can go, yeah, well, that makes sense why you are the way that you are. Do you want to be that way or do you want to change some certain aspects? Do you want to change some aspects? Well, hey, can I give you some tips on how to do so? Because I'm, con- I'm, I'm connecting all of the dots as to why you are the way that you are. Can we look forward and try to connect the dots going, this is who you want to be. So these are the puzzle pieces that we need to move around a little bit. I just love that. Not a lot of people love it. That's okay. But it happens to be what makes me excited. You know, there was a, a question one time they said that I heard somebody say, and they said, hey, if you had five days left to live, what would you do? And you write it all down. They say, hey, if you had five months left to live, Five days, I probably wouldn't be sitting here and creating content. I'd probably be spending time traveling with people that I love and spending as much time with them as I possibly can. If I had five months to live, I'd probably be spending a lot of that time getting everything that I can out of my brain onto video that I thought would be valuable for humans. That would probably be one of the things that I would spend a lot of time doing, right? So that just happens to be my passion. What is yours? You know, is it that you would spend time at a foundation? Is it, uh, is it th- that you would spend your time painting and creating art that could eventually inspire people later on down the road. What is it that makes you, as Alan Watts says, what is it that makes you itch? If money was not an object, what would you spend your time doing? Because ultimately what we find out is that money is the thing that holds us back from doing what it is that we wanna do. Because we think that we have to be constant pursuit for this thing, because that's what we've been taught since we were children. So what makes you light up inside? Is it, would you wanna start a business? In that business, 100% of profits go to children. Would you want to start a business and you know 
the real reason why you have the business to be able to expand human consciousness and improve people through your business and develop yourself as a leader so you can develop other people? Would you want to you know, record videos? Would you want to make music? Uh, would you become a coach and start be a, a life coach or a fitness coach or a nutrition coach? But maybe at this point, you don't think that that's possible for you. So you have to stick with your full-time job because you have to pay the mortgage. And you don't think that you can make money, even though you can make a ton of money as a coach, but there's a party that doesn't believe that. Would you start a charity? What would you do with your time? And here's the beautiful thing about it is, and, and I'll explain it to you this way is, and this usually tends to help a lot of people out, is when you're finding your passion, you're starting to work through your passion. There's two different things that could happen in your passion. Either number one, you could be a jackhammer, or number two, you could be a, uh, so number one is a jackhammer. Let me explain it real quick before I go into the next one. So a jackhammer is, if you've ever seen a jackhammer, literally just, you just go. You just break through everything. You just go, 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 go. And a jackhammer is someone who's like, I feel like with my passion, I'm a jackhammer. Like, I feel like I found this thing and I want to do this the day I die. It might shift in seven years. I might not want to do this in seven years. But at this point, I feel like this is really the thing that I want to spend the most time with, right? So are you a jackhammer? with yours? Or maybe, are you like a hummingbird? And this is where a lot of people actually are. Is a lot of people are hummingbirds. You know, we put a hummingbird feeder outside of our uh, a place about two weeks ago, and the hummingbird will come, and they'll feed on it, and then they'll go up into the trees, and they'll go into some of the flowers and the wildflowers we have outside, and they go from flower to flower, and they don't spend all day at one flower. They go from one flower to the next flower, to the next flower to the next flower. And so with your passion, it might not be something that you have to do until the day that you die. If it is, beautiful. You found it. That's the thing that you want to do till the day you die. But if you're someone that goes, hey, what could I spend the next three to five years of my life really getting into? Like if you had $500 million in your bank account, what would interest you for the next three to five years? What would intrigue you? And a good question you can ask yourself is, what, am, what do I want to learn more about? Like, what do I want to learn more about? Is there something that I want to learn about? Because usually what your, your passion is, is something that you're really intrigued by, something that makes you go, I want to learn more about this subject. So if you had $500 million and you could quit your job and you could spend time with your kids, in your time where you were learning about something, what would you want to learn? Usually your passion is in something that you're passionate about learning more about and developing a skill and going, you know what? I do want to get mastery in this subject. What is it for you? What would you like to do? If you had an infinite amount of money, almost, you could do whatever the hell that you wanted. You could spend time with your kids. You could travel. You could buy all of the shit that you want. What would you spend your time learning about? What intrigues you? Maybe you go, you know what? I would spend a lot of time watching films. And then that develops into something of like, hey, I think I want to buy a camera. And then it's like, hey, what if I were to actually try to shoot my own film? I've got enough money to create my own film. And then you go into filmmaking. You start going into editing. You start going into script writing. Maybe you want to get into comedy because you're like, I just love watching comedy. I want to see what the feeling is. I love the feeling of making people laugh. I wonder what it would be like if I just tried to make people laugh all day long. And I sit there and I try to improve the art of becoming a better comedian. What would that be like for you? You have $500 million. You could do anything. What would it be? Think about that for a second. What is it? Some of you listening are like, I think I know what it is. <clears throat> and if you think you know what it is, that's probably it, but you've been just telling yourself it's not possible. And some of you listening are like, I don't freaking know. And at that point in time, that's what I'm telling you is to wake up every single morning and say, hey, I want to know what I want. Universe, God, source, thing that's out there that's creating air, whatever it is that you want, that you, this keeps all of this thing running and I breathe out carbon dioxide and somehow the air, you know, the, the carbon dioxide goes into trees and trees give me oxygen. I breathe the oxygen. Something, something's keeping this cycle running. Whatever that thing that's keeping the cycle running and created all of this, what do I want? Can you just, I want to know what I want. Tell me what I want. And you set your reticular activating system to find it. And you go, I'm going to spend the, I'm going to, I'm going to set my intention that today I want to find a puzzle piece as to what my life purpose is. And I might not know exactly what it is, but I'm gonna find a little bit of a piece. And then tomorrow, I'm gonna find another piece. And the next day, I'm gonna find another piece. So I set my intention as to how I'm going into every single day so that therefore, I can start to find out what that purpose is. And then you ask yourself, what would I do if I had this money? And you start to figure it out. And you start to figure it out. And you start to figure it out. And the reason why I love the question of what would you do if you had $500 million 
gifted to in your bank account today is it cuts through all of the BS. It takes away all of the pursuit of money that we spend a lot of our time going after. And it gets down to what your true passions are. Often we take a job just because it's going to pay the bills and because you have bills you have to pay, but you weren't put on this earth just to simply pay your bills and die. You were put on this earth to thrive and to create something and to enjoy what is it you're doing. What is it? Now that you don't have to worry about working that job with people that you don't like or something that feels like it's sucking your soul, now what you can do is you can go, you know what? I'm going to spend my time doing something that I love to do. What is it? Now you can figure out what it is. Would you paint? Would you do music? What is your full expression of your human experience that you have? How would you want to leave this earth? What is your legacy that you want people to remember you by? Think about that for a second. What do you want people to remember you by? And you might not know what it is right away, but as long as you start, that's okay. And so write this down. I'm going to ask you this question. I want you to spend some time thinking about this. I'm given $500 million. What do I do with my time after I buy everything that I want? I'm given $500 million. What do I do with my time after I buy everything that I want? Once again, it's not okay. I mean, it is okay to not know what your purpose is right now, but it's not okay to not be in constant search for what that purpose is. You've got one. And I'm telling you, it wasn't to work a job that you don't enjoy just to be able to pay the bills and die. There's something else that's out there. I can't tell you what it is, but only you can find out what that thing is. So if you're given $500 million, what do you do with the rest of your life? So that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories and tag me at Rob Dial Jr., R-O-B-D-I-A-L-J-R. And if you want to receive an email from me every single Monday morning with my intentions going into the week, go to mondayemail.com right now. Once again, mondayemail.com. I'll send you a short email. It's absolutely free of what my intentions are going into every single week. So if you want to steal my intention and focus on that intention, you can seal it for me. And with that, I'm going to leave the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission to make someone else's day better. I appreciate you and I hope that you have an amazing day.